This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to update and upgrade our first sliver EDH deck. Thank you for joining us for another installment of the Up and Up series. Today we are updating and upgrading the first sliver. We've got four cards going in, we've got four cards coming out, and we have one conversation about a card that should not go into your sliver tribal deck. So let's begin with our first edition, and it is, ah uh, yes, it is the Hatchery Sliver. Here we have a sliver that just won't stay in my hand. All right, we've got a 2-2 two -two for one and a green with the Replicate Mechanic. Man, we're digging back in time to put a brand new mechanic on one of Sliver, on one of Magic's oldest tribes. For Replicate, when we cast this spell, we copy it for each time we paid its Replicate cost. And the Replicate cost is just one in a green mana, which is the same mana value of the Sliver. And of course, because of the hive mind of our own slivers, unfortunately. Each sliver spell we cast has replicate. The replicate cost is equal to its mana cost. So here we have a sliver that allows us to replicate every other sliver in our library, in our hand. If we can cast it from our hand, if we can cast it from anywhere, we can copy it for its replicate cost. All right, Hatchery Sliver, you are a guaranteed slam dunk into the 99 of Sliver builds, and you are going to be immensely powerful. With that Sliver going in, which, for all intents and purposes, we can consider that Sliver to be a win condition, we are going to take out one of our lesser win conditions in... The Virulent Sliver. Now here we have a sliver that gives all sliver creatures Poisonous 1, which we have to make sure we understand correctly that Poisonous 1 is not in fact. It's just a different way to deliver poison counters. So whenever a sliver deals combat damage to a player, that player also gets a poison counter. Now note, if the power of the sliver that deals the damage is 5... That player is not getting five poison counters. They're only going to get one. So it doesn't matter what the power is or how much damage is dealt. It's all about the act of dealing damage that puts the poison counters onto our opponents. And of course, a player with at least 10 poison counters loses the game. I think over the course of a game, we are going to get much more value from Hatchery Sliver than we will the Virulent Sliver. The mana value is pretty similar. This is one green. The Hatchery is one in one green. So we're not losing a lot when it comes to the mana curve of this deck. So with that in mind, Hatchery is in. And Virulent, you are out. All right, card number two... It is Shasha. Oh, the Capricious Sliver. All right, here we have a sliver with a mana value a bit heftier than Hatchery Sliver. We're not looking at one and a green mana here. We're looking at three and a red for a 3-3 three, three sliver. And this sliver creature gives other slivers we control... I'm sorry, let me say that in a different way. Sliver creatures we control have, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, we exile the top card of our library, and we may play that card this turn. So we do have some card advantage that we're going to get from adding Capricious Sliver to our deck, and with that in mind, we should be sure to make we should be sure to make sure from the Department of Redundancy Department of Redundancy that we have an adequate card coming out to make room for Capricious Sliver because one of the tragic flaws in most Sliver decks is ah, we can run out of gas pretty quickly because we get those bad boys into play with such quickness. Well, with Capricious Sliver, the top of our library becomes an extension of our hand. Although it is just temporary, we can cast those cards that turn that the Slivers will deal the combat damage. It's still going to be helpful because with Slivers, we're going fast, we're going quick, and the more cards we have access to, the greater chances we have of winning the game. With Capricious Sliver going in, coming out is going to be Hollow Head Sliver. Here was a Sliver that also provided some form of card advantage through its 
Um, not what the heck it's oh man it's not looting um, rummage through its rummage effect so the hollow head sliver for a mana value of two and a red so we're increasing our mana value here by another one generic mana similar to what we did when we replaced virulent sliver with hatchery sliver hollow head sliver gives sliver creatures we control the ability to tap to discard a card to draw a card now here we're tapping our creatures to draw cards where we would be tapping our creatures most likely to send them into combat in order to to get the similar card advantage from Capricious Sliver. Now, I think you can um, you could see that if we compare these two abilities, we discard a card in order to draw a card where we don't have to discard any cards for the Capricious Sliver's combat trigger ability. Yes, we don't get to hold on to that card, and we can only have until the end of turn to cast it, but still, I think we're going to get more benefits from Capricious Sliver over the course of a game than we will Hollowhead Sliver. So the Hollowhead is out, and Capricious is in. All right, card number three. I think the MTG burgeoning community out there, the MTG BC, baby, I think you're starting to notice a bit of a trend with the cards that are going in. S the next card, Sliver number three going in, it is the Lazatep Sliver. Here we have a 4-4 four, four Sliver, so this is the biggest Sliver we've added so far for three and a black mana, and this gives Sliver creatures we control Afflict 2. This is going to be fantastic. This is going to allow us to have another peripheral win condition when we create all of our sliver creatures. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not create them. When we create our army of slivers on our side of the battlefield, whether they're tokens or we're casting them. Because even if we send creatures that we know are going to get blocked down and die, the afflict ability will have our opponents think twice about doing so. Because whenever a creature with afflict 2 becomes blocked, that player loses to life so it's going to be the it's going to be it's going to give our opponents you know a lot of combat trickery potential when they see a bunch of slivers coming at them are they going to just take the combat damage or are they going to block down or if they declare no blockers thinking that they're just going to take one point here one point there one point here one point there and then through some of our other abilities that are in this deck we flash in some power boosts we flash in some ways in which to make them pay more than just taking the one life lasso tap sliver is going to cause a lot of headaches for our opponents and it is a very welcomed addition into this build but we're not done yet. There is a block of text under the afflict mechanic here that's also going to be very, very helpful to sliver decks. Whenever a non-token sliver we control dies, we amass slivers too, which means that we put two plus one plus one counters on an army we control. It's also a sliver. And if we don't control an army, we create a zero zero black sliver army creature token first, and then we add those plus one plus one counters. So if we have some non-token slivers that are getting sent to the graveyard, either by the hands of our opponents, or if we so choose to do so, then we have the ability to amass sliver armies that are just going to get taller and taller and become more of a threat on the battlefield. Lazatep Sliver is going to cause so many headaches for our opponents that it is an absolute slam dunk into the 99 of this build. With that mono black Sliver going in, the Sliver coming out is going to be Siphon Sliver. Here we have a Sliver for, for a mana value of 2 and a black, so again we're bumping up the mana value 1 generic mana. But we're losing a 2-2 two -two and putting onto the battlefield a 4-4, four -four, and all the siphon sliver does would give our sliver creatures would give sliver creatures we control lifelink. So the thought process here is, as opposed to us gaining life, let's focus more on our opponents losing life with the afflict mechanic, in addition to the to the Lazatep Sliver's ability to amass slivers, to amass sliver armies. So I think in a vacuum that the uh, Lasso Tap Sliver is going to be a much more valuable card than Siphon Sliver over the course of a game, to, of, o <laughs> over the course of a game, and I don't even think it's going to be that close. I mean, gaining the life helps to prolong the game on our side of the battlefield, but having our opponents lose additional life with the inclusion of Afflict, well, that's just going to shorten their clocks and most likely lead to quicker games for us in the win column. 
All right, so that's three slivers in, three slivers out. The fourth and final change we have here. Yes, it is. It is going to be Regal Sliver. Here we have a 3-3 mono white sliver for three and a white mana. And sliver creatures we control have, when this creature enters the battlefield, slivers we control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, if we're the monarch. Otherwise, we become the monarch. For anyone out there that runs slivers, you know that you can get multiple slivers into play very, very easily, and not always just during our turn. So we have no problem make getting the monarch. We have no problem taking the monarch back if one of our opponents decides to send their creatures at us and take it away. More often than not, we're going to have that monarch, and we're going to put slivers onto the battlefield in mass, and we're going to get plus one, plus one boosts until the end of turn, making regal slivers temporary power and toughness boosts an amazing potential win condition in a deck like slivers. So Regal Sliver going in and coming out similar with a mana value of four is going to be Dormant Sliver. Now the Dormant Sliver was a very, very good card out, card drawing outlet for us because whenever a Sliver would come into play, its controller draws a card. So that, that's going to be a little tough to lose. Now it's not a May ability. We always had to do that which at times provided a little bit of some uneasiness if we're getting into the later portions of the game and we're really trying to maybe win the game through some enter the battlefield triggers of some of the other slivers we have in this build and we get further and further into our library, then yeah, sometimes that could have been a little bit of an anxiety producer. But losing the card draw, hopefully, I mean, it's not going to be completely mitigated by, by having the Monarch because that's just going to be one card that we can draw at the beginning of our end step. Whereas through the Dormant Sliver, we would be able to draw multiple cards during our turn, our opponent's turns, during a round of turns. So this swap we're going to have to keep an eye on very, very closely. The way I finally reconciled it was, for a similar mana value, we replace a strong card drawing outlet with a weaker one but we also put in another win condition for a tribe that does not need another win condition we'll find out if that was the right move to make through gameplay and if we need to return to the up and up series to rectify this potential error then we will all right, MTGBC, there you have it four brand new slivers in and four slivers coming out but we're not done yet. We're going to take a moment to talk about a sliver that should not go into your sliver deck. And the sliver in question is Sliver Grave Mother. Here is the latest, most recent, newest legendary Wooburg sliver. So that's the sliver can be your commander. White, blue, black, red, green mana, 6-6. Six, six. Oh, it's unfortunate that we couldn't go back to the 7-7. Seven, seven. This is the second time that Wizards has printed a five-color legendary sliver that wasn't the 7-7 seven, seven variety. But enough about that. So, the Grave Mother. It gives legend rule. It makes that the legend rule for our slivers does not apply. So keep that in mind. It's the legend rule does not apply to slivers we control. We're going to come back to that because I want to make sure that we explain all of the Sliver Grave Mother's abilities before we talk about why it should not go into your deck. Each Sliver creature card in our graveyard has Encore X, where X is its mana value. To Encore, we pay the Encore cost, and then we exile the card from our graveyard, and then for each opponent, we create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste, and then they are sacrificed at the beginning of the, they are sacrificed at the, beginning of the end step, and we can only Encore as a sorcery. So the part that always trips me up with the Encore ability is the fact that this is just going to be a one-and-done effect. We have to exile the sliver, we have to exile the card from our graveyard. We are playing five colors. We are not hurting for any type of graveyard recursion, particularly in a tribal deck that has so many tribal synergies like slivers. For me, in my mind, I don't want to lose my slivers to exile from the graveyard, even if it is for a one-and-done effect. I want to make sure that I can get those slivers back onto the battlefield, back into my hand, back into my library, because once they're exiled, 
they are most likely gone for the game. So for me, I tapped the brakes very, very gently when I was first reading about the Encore ability for Slivers because I don't want a one-and-done effect for my Slivers. I want to be able to make sure I can get them all over the place. I want them from, like I said, I want them back from the graveyard to go into the library, go into my hand, go back into play. But if we Encore them, they're gone. You got them for one turn and then they're gone. Now, let's go back to the legend rule does not apply to slivers we control. So, there are not as many legendary slivers in this tribe as there are in other tribes, and that's rightfully so, because there's only so many five-color slivers that we have access to at this time. Our general, the first sliver, that would be a very nice way to have multiple cascade abilities by having two versions of the first sliver in play. Now, I can see some synergies that we have the first sliver in the graveyard, and then we have the sliver grave mother in play, and we encore the first sliver into play and get a couple of, and get a few copies of the first sliver. The legend rule doesn't apply, and then we can cascade through our entire library by casting other spells. That just seems like a lot of hoops to jump through when we can just do a lot of other perverse things with the first sliver in the command zone, in our hand, in the graveyard, or on the battlefield. Another legendary sliver that could fit very well with the sliver Grave Mother's Legend Rule Doesn't Apply ability would be the Legion Sliver. Now, this sliver acts as a personalized sliver version of Coat of Arms, as all sliver creatures will get plus one, plus one for each other's sliver in play. So if we were to encore the Sliver Legion from our graveyard, we've got the one turn that have triple, quadruple, however number of opponents we have for all of our Slivers with those plus one, plus one abilities. But again, it's a one and done effect. I mean, if we have an opponent that fogs or cyclonic rifts or whatever, we lose that Sliver Legion and it's not coming back. I can see the synergies with those two. Now, there are three other legendary slivers that, really, they're not going to help us here. The Sliver Hive Lord, indestructible, double indestructible, is redundant. It's not going to help us in any way. The Sliver Overlord, having two versions of this, the ability to, you know, pay three to search our library for a sliver and to pay three to gain control of a sliver, that doesn't change. It's still three for each of them. Having two copies doesn't change that. And then lastly, with the Sliver Queen, it's the exact same thing with the Sliver Overlord. Having two copies of Sliver Queen, still, it still costs two or two copies, three copies, four copies, however many, however many copies we have. It's still going to cost us two generic mana to create that baby Sliver. So from right there, the legend rule not applying to Slivers we control... All right, Sliver Grave Mother, it's okay for two. It's great for Sliver Legion. It's okay with the first Sliver, and for three, it's redundant. So that's not even 40% of our legendary Slivers that are going to benefit from the Grave Mother. So let's talk about the other Slivers in this deck that, you know, could come in from the graveyard through the Encore ability and how helpful that may or may not be. So this following stack of slivers all come from, all come, the stack of slivers is from this actual build. Here are the slivers that once they're in the graveyard, if we were to encore them, their abilities are not going to stack up and help us in any way, shape, and form outside of only having just the one copy. Here we have the Gale Rider with flying. Flying is redundant. So is first strike. So is vigilance. The same thing with regeneration. And now we have haste. I mean, you can't have double haste. I mean, we can't attack with creatures from our hand. And then menace, that's the same thing. The gem hide is only going to tap to add one mana once. Same thing with the mana weft. Quick sliver flash, you're not going to have double flash. It's not like you can play the card straight from the pack. Venom, death touch, you can't have double death touch. It might hurt you. Double shroud, what the hell is that? Paying two life, we're not going to pay four life, so we don't really want to have anything to do with that. Flying and haste, that's just a double combination. Here we have the mirror entity we still have to pay the ability just the one time we're not going to do it twice basil sliver for the sacrifice ability for two black mana that's only going to get done once same thing with the homing sliver and sliver cycling same thing with the realm walker we're only going to look at the top card of our library one time having th 
having that ability three times isn't going to help. Same thing with the Necrotic Sliver. It's still a mana, or I'm sorry, it's still an activation cost of three, and we still have to sacrifice a creature to destroy a permanent. Shifting Sliver, Slivers can only be blocked by Slivers. Well, we can't have that doubling and tripling up because... Let's face it, it's still only a one and done. It's still just a one redundant ability. So look at how the slivers piling up here are not really looking very good when we talk about adding the sliver grave mother. 22 non-legendary slivers, three legendary slivers for 25 slivers to the two right now that are against adding sliver grave mother. Yes, we do have a few slivers here that would be a beneficial target for an Encore one-and-done ability. Of course, the Sinu with the plus one, plus one, having three or four of those in play. Again, it's just one-and-done, though. The Hatchery Sliver can help us with that, and the Muscle does the same, and so does the Predatory. The Sedge, the sedge Sliver also has plus one, plus one, as long as we have a Swamp, but we will because this is a five-color deck. The Diffusion Sliver gives double, um, I guess we're calling this Ward 2, because they, they didn't have Ward back during this core set. So, I mean, that helps with protection. You know, Ward 2, Ward 4, Ward 6, that's going to be pretty good. Spiteful Sliver, this one could, I mean, this one could pile up. If we have four copies of this and somebody decides to, you know, Blasphemous Act, guess what? We're going to win the game very easily without even having to commit a lot of brain power to the combat math. Lava Belly Sliver, this could, this certainly could, because the way in which this deck is built with the um, bounce abilities that we have and the sacrifice abilities and casting things from our hand for free through Alluren and Cloudstone Curio and stuff like that, having three or four copies of Lava Belly could end the game very quickly. But it's just a one and done effect. Same thing with Synapse Sliver and its card draw. So if we count that up, I think that's nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. So that's eight slivers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's eight slivers here that could benefit from the one and done encore ability of Sliver Grave Mother to go with the first sliver and the legions. I'm sorry, the Sliver Legion. It's 25 to the no, 10 to the good. Is Sliver Grave Mother worth forcing into your Sliver deck to have at most a 1 in 10 or 1 in 9 chance of encoring a Sliver from the graveyard into play for a 1 and done chance to win the game? For me, I say no. MTGBC, you let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning. Yo, channel for all things magic. <laughs>